What's up, YouTube? Train fans, coming to you from my garage today. Got all this craziness going on. Been printing 3D trains and kits as fast as I can, filling orders. I just wanted to kind of show you what that process kind of looks like if you're interested. So let's get started. It's been a while since I've created a YouTube video. It's been pretty busy. We had a new baby two months ago, so that adds a lot of chaos. And yeah, just trying to keep my normal job going and keep this going at the same time. It's been a real challenge. So I'll kind of give you a tour around what the process is like building one of these trains or a kit like this or even a paint job like this. I've done a couple of those and I'm currently working on a Western Pacific conversion for a gentleman. I finally got the paint to match. This cap didn't turn out so I used it as my guinea pig to, to test the paint. So yeah, let's do a quick tour. I'll start off by showing some of the CAD drawings that I do for some of these models. This part is probably the most time consuming and getting every detail right and every millimeter and screw hole lined up takes quite a while on some of these bigger projects like this four axle um, motor block for the DD40X. The DD40X itself obviously took a huge amount of time to design but yeah, this is where I start. Every project is in my Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 program. I'm not going to show you that one yet. So, this is where it all, the magic happens. If I've got time, I spend it here designing these models and making them printable. Because if you have an object here, they're not always necessarily printable. They have weird geometry in there. And if you have a printer that can handle overhangs, um, SLA printers are way better because they have the ability to print overhangs with supports that snap off fairly easy. FDM printers, the ones that print in layer by layer, can if you have a dual nozzle or dual extrusion printer, but don't have the resolution. So there's lots of challenges that come with designing something like this, but it is also very rewarding to have something on a computer and then have it spit out on a printer and have a real object. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a quick look at what this part of it looks like. A lot of people want to get a 3D printer but don't have anything to print or can't do this part. I had to teach myself how to do all of this. YouTube's a great resource. If you want videos, message me and I can show you the videos I watch to learn how to do some of these CAD drawings, but they're very useful if you want to make your own 3D parts. Okay, so let's take a look at this new CAD kit that I developed. It's the cab for a SD70 ACE. As most of you know, the USA Trains um, SD70s come as a Mac, I believe they call it. And it has the cab that has the, the sloped, kind of a rounded nose look. And then the cab that's on the kit that I make has the cutouts right here that are more squared off and the cab windows are not the teardrop windows and the depending on which model you got they did make them with the light in the nose or in the top i might make a kit later that'll have a nose option or a nose light option but for now it's just in the top and i added the gps units on top and then it added the side pieces and of course, my phone rings when I'm trying to make a video. So yeah, it's a pretty good kit. I don't like to cut on my engines. It drives me nuts and I'm not very good at it. So if I can make a kit that just slips on, that's definitely what I'm gonna do. And you can also convert it back if you'd like to ever sell the unit or for whatever reason, if you don't like the kit or whatever. You can just slide it on, take all your detail off the top and put it back on the engine, all these fans just slide right in. I notched it out so that you can line up the, the notch in this with that piece and they slide right on along with your uh, rings, your grab rail and your uh, sanding cap. So I did both sides of 
the ACE to make it look right. So I, and I got it pretty close. It's hard to make them perfect, especially if you're not gonna cut on the engine. To make a slip-on kit is much more difficult than a fully custom kit where you cut away parts of the engine. Yeah, that's a quick and dirty version. In order to get it onto the engine, you do have to take the engine apart and then you take the engine off, or the cab off, sorry, take the shell off, and then this piece slides right into this. I've made the notches line up, and then it slides right onto this. Let's see if I can do it one-handed without breaking anything. But basically you just lay it upside down, put this piece and lay it upside down. And then I like to squeeze these in a little bit and then you just slide it in there. I won't be able to do it one-handed, but you slide it into there until those line up and then it just clicks in. I did notice that some of the USA Trains cabs have screw holes right here to kind of screw them in to the body, but not all of them do. I don't know if it's an older version that doesn't, but some of them don't have those holes. Mine don't have those holes. It seems to stay pretty well. I also managed to line up the screw holes that are on the frame with the holes in the cab because your factory USA Trains engine has standoffs right there that the screws go in to mount it to the body as well as the screws for the lights that go above the engine. So that part didn't turn out perfect because this distance here is shorter than that of the USA Trains version so I did end up cutting on it a little bit if you want the lights to go in there I had to cut these corners off so it's very moderate just cut those two corners off and then it does fit inside the cab and you can have cab lighting you can also use your factory interior on that cab it slides in uh, the only thing I haven't quite figured out is the windows. I can't print clear windows. And so usually it's just a little sheet of that clear plastic you can get from a hobby store. These are my attempts at a clear window. As you can see, they're quite hazy. And I snapped this one just to see if it was strong enough. But it would go behind here and be a window if I could get it to print clear. Also looks like, like I need to cut some of the more of the supports off. Those aren't normally there. I cut those things off. Yeah. That's the basics of the cab that I sell. I also sell the little cap, the sanding cap that goes there. It comes with it. Um, and I have done a little bit of painting for people, as you can have you seen. Um, I've got a few colors that I've matched, like that Western Pacific and the Rio Grande. I've got that color. If I don't have the color, it is quite expensive to get the color matched, somewhere around $70, and it's like $20 to load it into a can so I can spray it. But it is a, an option, plus my time to spray it. Because as you can see, I got quite a few to do. <laughs> and uh, here's some that are gonna go out this week. I did end up making a railing for the side pieces, because the factory railing um, on this part is not even an option. There's not enough railing to bend and make work. On this side, however, there is enough railing to make it work. It doesn't look the best, so I decided to make my own. The heroes of this whole operation are probably my printers. These things work tirelessly 24 hours a day making all my kits. And this kit right here is going to be my next big project. You'll have to wait and see what that one is. You'll have to subscribe so I can get more <laughs> viewers. That'd be great. If you want to sub, that'd be great. Because if I get a thousand subs, I can do live videos. And that'd be really cool to do some stuff live if I've just got a minute to show you guys what I'm up to. And of course, the other project I do is a DD40X or DDA40X with the four axle trucks. And uh, this one's already sold, so as soon as I get it done, this gentleman's gonna come pick it up. 
but that is a monster of a model. And I do everything from the fans to the railing on the front, and then I paint it and do all the decals. So the railing turned out really nice. And the thing about 3D printing is it is a process, big time. You can have amazing prints that turn out quite wonderful, or you can have ones that turn out like that. If you get your walls too thin, or you mess up your settings in your printer, in your slicer, so it can go wrong really quick, and then it makes a huge mess of your printer, and sometimes you break the parts trying to get it off, and so all these are my failures. All these cabs are kind of my first editions. They don't have, they're missing either parts that I couldn't get to line up, or they don't, they're not quite long enough, they didn't fit on the frame. So it took me four or five versions just to get one that fit on the USA Trains frame. Mostly because I'm not an engineer, so I just get to do it by trial and error. And another project that'll be in the future is this FP45. I've always wanted to do one of those. I may release one for people to buy, but right now this one's just going to be one that I wanted. Because I used to play with one as a kid. My dad had a HO set, and he had a FP45. Uh, Great Northern that was blue, and I just love that thing. It's my favorite engine. So yeah, hopefully I touched on everything I want to touch on. Um, if you like my videos, let me know. And if I can improve, let me know. I'm always a fan of constructive criticism. And uh, hopefully you guys have a wonderful week, and we will see you later.